as it relates to your life. If you have vision, again, it is the driving force behind God's plan for the world as it relates to your life. Am I, am I speaking to anybody this morning? I mean, are you, are you hearing this about vision, about God's plan as it relates to your, your life? The Bible says, without vision, people perish. See, vision, let me, let me go ahead and explain a little bit more. Vision is not the same as ambition. Ambition is what a person desires to become in life. Vision, on the other hand, is what God has created him to become. Vis ambition, again, ambition is what you desire to become in life. Vision is what God has created you to become. Stay with me now. Uh, see, the, the intersection of the two is where our will is lost in the will of God. The, 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 the intersection, the place where they meet, is where our will is lost in the will of God. Vision is higher than ambition. Vision is higher than ambition. See, to become truly successful in life, your vision must become your ambition. Vision must become your ambition. What God has created you to be is what you have to desire to become in your life. Okay. See, see, vision, this, this vision and the ambition uh, kind of thing in life, this is, this is where, where we get it all, all mixed up. This is where we get it twisted. See, we get ambition tangled up with God's vision as it relates to our lives. Let me give you some examples. A person's ambition may be to be a banker and make loads of money. But God's vision for that person may be to use that skill and resource to advance the kingdom of God here on earth. Another example, a person's ambition may be to teach school-aged children, but God's vision for that person may be to show the love of God to some children who desperately need to know God's love. God may call a person to teach in the classroom, but God gives them a vision to show love in urban communities and neighborhoods where the love of God needs to be shared with, with, with other, other people. Amen. Okay? A person's ambition may even be to be a minister or a pastor. But God's vision for that person may be to tell the people, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would they be? If it had not been for the Lord on their side, they would not be because they have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Are you still with me about this vision, ambition, and, and vision? To, see, to become truly successful in life, your vision must be your ambition. Again, what reason are you living for? For what reason has God placed you on this planet? For what reason has God placed you on the planet? What is the vision God has for your life? That, that was the question faced by the prophet Habakkuk. He, he was a prophet in Israel and was troubled by ungodliness and injustice in Israel. But when God revealed that he was about to use the Babylonians to punish his people, Habakkuk asked God how he could use the ungodly to punish those, those who were more moral than the Babylonians. It was a daring and ethical question. Habakkuk was asking God if he was doing the right thing. Habakkuk, it was, a, it was a, 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 a really serious and ethical question. Habakkuk was asking God if he was doing the right thing. Isn't that how it is with us sometimes? It seems like God is on a holiday. It seems, oh, am I the only one? 
<laughs> that feels like sometimes, seems like God is taking a holiday. It seems like God is allowing the wrong thing to take hold in the world with these set of circumstances, situations, and problems. See, we want to ask God sometimes, God, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Oh, I guess I'm the only one. When we see all this killing and shooting that's going on in the streets, I guess I'm the only one that says, God, are you, are you sure you're on your throne? Are you sure you're doing the right thing? When sometimes it seems like heathen are raging, we want to ask the question, uh, uh, God, are you sure? Oh, I'm the only one. You, you're going to tell me I'm the only one with the audacity to question God? Mm. Well, if I am, I'm in some good company. Because I'm right along with Habakkuk. Because Habakkuk is asking the question. We can even look around and ask God these questions. See, for example, the segregation laws have changed, but they're still locking our people up at the rate of 60% in Delaware for doing the same things that other people are doing. Mm -hmm. The killings in our neighborhood are a much higher rate than when people were coming in our hood wearing white sheets and burning crosses. Families are falling apart. Disease is rampant. Desperation and depression is ramping up. God, are you doing the right thing? That's what, that's what Habakkuk was saying. The prophet had been waiting intently and, and apprehensively for God's reply. God said it is a matter of faith. Those that have faith in him live right and do right. Oh, y'all didn't hear me when I said that. Those that have faith in him live right and do right. The proud do what is right in their own sight. Not in the sight of Almighty God. They just want to do what they want to do. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I must be in here by myself. See, see, let me tell you. Pride and might did not make Israel right. It did not justify Israel. And it would not have justified the Babylonians either. See, faith in God and faithfulness to his ways is the only thing that can justify a man, or a woman, or a nation before God. Uh, 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 faith in God can, is the only thing that will justify us before God. See, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith in God and not by our own human sight. Amen? Amen. Well, the question today is, as we talk about this whole sense of vision, the question is, what is the intersection where the vision God has for Habakkuk meets up with his prophetic ambition? What is the vision? What is the intersection? What is that place where your ambition is going to meet up with God's vision for your life? Well, first of all, if we're going to, if we're going to have vision in our lives, in order to get vision, you have to be expecting God's revelation. In order to get vision, you have to be expecting God's revelation. Uh, you have to be watching for God to reveal himself. In, 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 the, in the second chapter, in the second verse, God tells the prophet to take notes concerning what will happen. Then the Lord answered me and, and, and said, uh, uh, then the Lord answered me, Habakkuk says, and then he said, write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that the runner may read it. God did not disappoint his servant who was waiting for a reply. Habakkuk's answer was received because of his disciplined watchfulness. Yeah. See, in ancient days, the watchmen were responsible to warn the city of the approaching danger. And, and if they weren't faithful to their task, their hands would be stained with the blood of the people who died. See, they had a responsibility to warn the people of the coming danger. It was a serious responsibility. They had a responsibility to warn people of the coming danger. We too, along with Habakkuk, bear the responsibility to warn people to change their mind and repent or turn from their unrighteous life and flee from the wrath to come. You see, you see, in this particular story, you get the impression that Habakkuk was anticipating a rebuke for his boldness before God. If you look at and read that first chapter, uh, 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 Habakkuk 
Habakkuk is, is, is almost uh, uh, blasphemous in his discussion with God. But the Lord graciously answered him, giving him the revelation that he needed to turn his worry into worship. See, that's what we need to do sometimes, is we need to turn our worry into worship. See, all these things that we're worried about, all these things that we're concerned about, all these things that are going on around us, what we need to do is we need to amp up our worship. We need to uh, get stronger in our worship and relationship with Almighty God. Uh, we need to turn our worry into worship. Uh, 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 Habakkuk is commanded to record the revelation on tablets. Uh, the letters were to be large and legible enough to be read easily. So the prophet is instructed to reduce the vision to writing so that the people would have, would, would have it for the future. For his message would not take effect immediately. The one, the one reading, the one, the one reading it. See, see, he wanted it to be plain. God wanted it to be big. God wanted it to be plain, uh, because the one uh, 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 who was reading it, uh, uh, even if a person was running past, they should be able to uh, read it and tell that what the message said. See, 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 one of the things that we've got to understand about the message, and we need to make it big enough, we need to make it heightened enough, we need to... Sister, can you can you get Kalima? Cause, Cause they're not paying attention to me while Kalima's moving around down front. 